No matter how many lenses I own, there is something to be said about having a lens that can do it all. Well, most of it all. Now this video isn't about one specific lens, but rather the idea of having a lens with versatility. I'll be using the Sony 24-70G Master, but there are other lenses like the super popular Tamron 28-75 that will work just the same. Now before we get into talking about those lenses, let's talk about the opposite for a second, which are prime lenses. Now if you're not familiar with what a prime lens is, it's a lens with a fixed focal length, meaning that you can't really zoom in or out. Now some common focal lengths for prime lenses are are 24 millimeters, 35 millimeters, 50 millimeters, and 85 millimeters. And the benefit of prime lenses is that they usually have a super low aperture, like 1.4 or 1.8, and typically are sharper than zoom lenses. Now, I actually love the idea of a prime lens because it forces you as a photographer to move around your shooting space more and hunt for new compositions rather than zooming in or out. Now, trust me, I'm a fan of some of these primes, like my 35 millimeter f1.4, for example, that you've heard me talk about tons of times and I literally use on almost every shoot, but they do sometimes come with their own limitations and they limit your versatility when it comes to shooting a wide variety of subject matter. Now let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's start at the widest end of the stick, okay, at 24 millimeters. This is super useful for wide shots of houses, real estate, group photos, landscapes, you name it. It's also a super great focal length for dramatic wide portraits, like you will see with the 24 millimeter f1.4 lens. You'll see this focal length in magazine portraiture where they try and kind of exaggerate the features of a model and it's great for photos like architectural digest that want to showcase the setting that a person is in for example. It creates a really unique portrait look. Now moving on to the 35 millimeter as we know my favorite focal length to ever exist in the history of focal lengths. Now this is a great focal length for a true cinematic look because it's kind of the perfect balance of intimacy while also showcasing some of the background around a subject in like a complementary way. So it's not distorting your image at all, like a 24 millimeter would and making that subject look really, really wide. 35 millimeter is like, it's wide, but it's still a portrait. It's just like a natural look. You following? Okay, that was my rant, let's move on. Like I just mentioned, 35 millimeters is one of my favorite focal lengths for portraits. It's also my favorite focal length for filming literally anything. So that's talking head, B-roll, all of the above. And again, the best part about a lens like this, the 24 to 70, is that if I need a bit more room or want to go a smidge tighter, I can always make those micro adjustments to my focal length. So before we move on to what the rest of what this lens can do, I wanna talk about another Swiss Army knife that's in my toolkit, and that's superhuman. If you've ever, even for a millisecond, thought that doing emails is annoying and mundane, then superhuman is for you. So I've been using superhuman literally since the moment I heard about it because it is just that fantastic. What superhuman has done is they've literally rebuilt the whole experience of doing emails from the ground up to make it the most zen and relaxing part of my day. Okay, that actually might be when I cuddle with my cats, but still, doing my emails is now the second most zen and relaxing part of my day. So simply put, after signing up and connecting your Gmail to the Superhuman email client, you'll access Superhuman with this little Chrome extension up here. This will open up the entire Superhuman UI. Now don't be fooled by their minimal design. This thing is packed full of functionality that you'll actually use, okay? So first things first, it's important to know that every email ever just like your friends, will either be important or not important. Doesn't tell you anything about what my friendships are like. By default, the superhuman AI will try and guess what emails are important and which aren't. The ones that aren't important are put into this folder over here called Other, which you can access just up here. Once you're done with an email forever, you can just press E to get rid of it or filter it into the Done folder. Now typing Command K on your keyboard is a feature that will bring up this central search bar command bar, whatever you want to call it. It's super intuitive because you can type anything into this bar and Superhuman will probably read your mind. So another cool feature, which I've been using all the time now is called snippets. And essentially it's a fancy way of saying pre-written replies. Now I get a lot of emails that are essentially saying the same thing. One for example is the type of email that I need to forward to my agent. Now to make this super simple, and I'll just hit R to start a reply and automatically tap the semi colon button to bring up my list of snippets that I've already built and tap return or enter on the one I wanna choose. As you can see, the snippet has already 
already personalized the email by putting the sender's name first in the opening line of the email. And once I'm ready to send, I just hit command enter to send it off. Now, another cool feature is that when I open up an email with a suggested or requested appointment booking, my calendar will automatically show me how my day looks for that specific day. So I know whether or not I can actually accommodate it. Literally within five to 10 minutes, I can have all of my emails done for the day. And this would have normally taken me hours. So if you're interested in learning more about how Superhuman can literally change your workflow and efficiency, then click the link down there in the description box to learn more. I can't recommend it enough. Moving on up to 50 millimeters, then we practically have a nifty 50 with a bit of a lower f-stop. And this is a great focal length for even more compressed portraits. It's also great for things like food photography and some product photography work. People usually say that 50 millimeters is true to what our eye sees, which makes it a really natural looking length for our eyes to look at. Now, I don't always personally use 50 millimeters because I would rather shoot at 35 for portraits and something closer to 70 for product photography, but if I need 50, I'm happy that I have it. And usually that's when you're like on a run and gun shoot and you don't even realize you suddenly you're shooting 50 because you're just doing this the whole time and it's all happening really quickly. And you're like, oh, I guess I did need 50 mil. You know, and you're happy it's, it's there as an option. So last but not least, <laughs> once we go all the way up to 70 millimeters, which is entering into the realm of a telephoto lens, at 70 millimeters, you're going to get some incredible compression for product photos or tighter portraits, for example. And this is a great focal length for B-roll where you can really get close-up shots and detail details of products, people, faces, etc. And that's what I used to do and still do for 90% of my run and gun vlog tip videos where I'm traveling and trying to shoot all of this in one day on my own. So again, you're getting all of this, all of these different focal lengths with one lens. So no matter how well you plan for a shoot, you can sometimes be thrown curveballs as to what a client needs. You might enter a portrait shoot thinking, ah yes, my 35 millimeter prime is perfect for today. But suddenly the client tells you to get a super wide shot of an entire room you're in, or they tell you to get an extreme close-up frame of just the model's eyes and you're running out of time. So having a versatile lens like the 24 to 70 will not only allow you to be more versatile with your shooting range, but it might help to impress your client more. So having a prime isn't necessarily always better. If you're able to deliver on a request simply because you have the right lens, then that can only be a good thing. And if you don't believe me, let's go ask Chris. <laughs> Chris, quick question, okay? What is the most all-encompassing lens in the Sony lineup? 24 to 70, f2.8. Good, you said what I wanted you to say. Because it is. It is. It is the lens. Precisely. The other thing you want to consider is, yes, a 24 to 70 is perfect for run and gun shoots. You're tight on time, you need something versatile, it's great. But if you're shooting video and you're using a gimbal, every single time you change your lens, you have to rebalance that gimbal. So you're shooting wide, you want something tighter. And it's really not a great idea on set when you have limited time to be switching out your lenses and having to rebalance your gimbal every single time. Again, I'll repeat, don't come after me and say that I'm bashing primes, okay? I love primes but when it comes to having a lens or lenses that will cover you against almost every shooting scenario, then I would reach for something like the 24 to 70. Actually, if you want the most amount of range, then maybe look into something like the new Tamron 35 to 150. It's just a little heavy, that's all. As you might recall, I used this lens down in Mexico and it was honestly such a dream to work with. So get yourself a standard zoom lens that will enable you to capture a wide variety of subjects, scenes, and scenarios. If you're still not convinced, let's just say that this entire video was shot with the 24 to 70 and well yeah, I am impressed and there's something to be said about there's quality which is important for a client and there's also time efficiency and just getting the job done and looking competent on set and sometimes that means not necessarily being able to reach for the most perfect lens or a prime lens every single time so thank you guys so much for watching this video that is my rant about the 24 to 70 and prime lenses thank you for coming to my TED talk if you like this video and you like hearing me talk about lenses and rant about lenses, please give this video a like down below, subscribe if you're not already, and hit the notification bell to get notified for all future videos, and let me know what rant you would like to see me do on another lens, maybe, down the line. Bye.